All right, we're right at five after the hour, so I want to invite everyone to come back from our short break. Hopefully you had time to grab a coffee or maybe a wine for those of you in Europe. I know it's evening there. And excellent. We have all of our panelists for our second panel. Um, before we dive in, I do want to say thank you to Patricia and all of the designers from our first panel. I know many of us tuned in for that discussion and it was quite thoughtful and insightful. So looking forward to building on that with our next panel. So welcome officially to part two of our Women in Design Summit. This is our business of design panel. I'm Laura Walsh, I'm the CEO of Lumens and I'm thrilled to be your host today, especially as I too am a woman in the business of design. For a little bit of my personal background, I came to the design industry about three years ago in what was a fortuitous career change. And what I found in this industry and a couple of things that we're gonna dive into today is first, you know, the design world's a very close knit community. It's one where people are willing to cross competitive lines to collaborate and support each other. And I think you'll see that on display today. I think it's worth noting that the women we have on the panel today are in some ways competitors, but in other ways, friends and supporters of one another. In our industry, we also have some incredible stories of entrepreneurship and disruption. Some of them we'll get to hear today. And then finally, we share something very important to me and I know to many of us, a shared commitment to sustainability. That was a big topic on our first panel and we're gonna take a little bit of a different angle and talk about it from a perspective of business um, today. So without further ado, please let me introduce our panelists. So first we have Carlota de Bevilacqua. She is an entrepreneur, architect, designer, and teacher. With a degree in architecture from the Politecnico di Milano, she is the president and CEO of Artimity and Denise Milano. Welcome, Carlota. Next, we have Joanna Bover. In 1996, Joanna founded Bover in Barcelona, Spain. Born from napkin sketches scribbled down at a restaurant, I hope we get to hear that story later, the, Vo the Bover brand now ships its diverse product portfolio around the world with offices in Spain and the US. So welcome, Joanna. <clears throat> Next on our, pan on our panel, we have Amelie Dupassage. She is an HEC economics school graduate. She served as a speechwriter under Jean-Jacques Ayagon during his time as Minister for Culture before working for the FIAC Contemporary Art Fair. In 2009, driven by her love for design, Amelie founded Petit Futur and is the brand's artistic director. Welcome, Amelie. Next, we have Benedict Collode. After studying business and intellectual property law, as well as art history at the Ecole du Louvre, Benedict worked as a lawyer at Grand Marnier and then became the legal director at Danone, the glassmaking branch. In 2005, she co-created Designor, a manufacturer of contemporary lighting fixtures based in France. And I think it's worth noting that Designor was one of our first brands uh, on our trade access line, which, which is a line of products available exclusively to designers. And then finally, let me introduce Roberta Silva, the CEO of Floss. I know Roberta quite well. Roberta has held important positions in Italy and abroad from the Craft Group to Bose, a US multinational leader in high-end electronic design products. The arrival of Roberta Silva at Floss in 2019 in the role of CEO marks the start of a new chapter in the history of excellence of this iconic lighting brand. So welcome, Roberta, and welcome to all of our panelists. Some of you I'm meeting for the first time, so nice to meet you and really looking forward to our discussion today. And so I'm gonna dive right into the questions that we have for you. <clears throat> and similar to the first panel, we'll do about 45 minutes of prepared questions, and then we'll open it up for audience questions as well. And so Roberta, I'm gonna start with you today, and we wanna hear a little bit about your experience in design versus other industries. And so the, the question is, what is the most exciting aspect of being a leader in the design industry as opposed to other industries? Oh, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, what is really uh, strong in uh, the design, especially in the lighting, uh, in the lighting design, is uh, the fact that we create uh, uh, something that is really impacting uh, the everyday life uh, of uh, uh, our 
and users. Uh, so we have a, a strong responsibility. Uh, and uh, we have to say that we have a wonderful mix of ingredients uh, in order to create something very special and something that is very uh, appreciated and loved by, by our users. So we have the opportunity to mix uh, technology, to mix uh, emotions, uh, aesthetics, uh, uh, and uh, in a very magical way. And we work also with uh, uh, fantastic designers because in Floss we have the best designers in the world and uh, with them uh, we can uh, work in a, in a sort of ping pong playing uh, and uh, as Patricia was explaining before about Almendra because uh, we they propose concept or we propose a technology and then we start playing together. And uh, what is really special in this industry versus food or versus consumer electronics is uh, this balance uh, between uh, among all these elements. So it's a, it's a wonderful mix of technology, of design, and uh, now there's another wonderful ingredient that is sustainability and uh, working designers like Patricia, for example, is fundamental because we started the project speaking about sustainability. So it's a special triangle with these three elements, technology, design and sustainability, and we can create uh, really something special that is able to impact uh, everyday life of our people every way, uh, in every place, uh, in at home, in the office, uh, in an hotel. So, and this is amazing. It's uh, the most exciting industry I've ever been. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. I agree. Thank you, Roberta. And ben Benedict, we'd love to hear from you on that question as well. What's the most exciting aspect for you of being a leader in the design industry? Yeah, for me, it's really to be a link between the designer and the industry, which are two words that normally ignore each other. Uh, so it means uh, stimulating the industry by bringing it new challenges and protecting our market also through design, innovation, uh, which make it uh, possible to be identified and protected. And it's also to, to offer emotional and functional uh, products, meaning uh, the challenge uh, is to combine the, the product function uh, together with the emotional uh, value. So being ahead of the input uh, means starting from scratch and innovating for, for the environment, the human well-being also, while taking into account uh, the manufacturing uh, constraints, uh, the material, the price, uh, and the recycling, of course. And so, in, in summary, it is uh, the possibility for impacting uh, humans, uh, their daily living also, uh, and uh, with uh, the service provided uh, from a functional uh, point of view, uh, the storytelling and uh, the ingenuity, of course. So, Excellent. Yeah. It's Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, wonderful. And I think a lot of parallels between both Roberta and Benedict, your responses, and I think some themes will continue to build upon with sustainability, the emotional aspect of products, etc. Yes. Next question I'm very excited to hear about. Um, and Amelie, we'll, we'll go to you first. So you started your own company. I'd love to hear what inspired you to do that. Oh, Amelie, I think I think you're on mute still. No, we can't hear you. I'll go, maybe, Benedict, can I come back to you? And then Amelie, hopefully one of our team members can help you work that out and we'll come back to you um, at the end. Do you hear it? Oh, yes, there we go. Perfect. Go it ahead, is, Amelie. It is on your side, but it's done, so it's fine. Um, and the, yeah, so I started the company about a bit more than 10 years ago. Um, and the... Uh, Petit Friture is not a, an industry, we are not makers, we work with subcontractors. So the idea behind the company was really to bring a new generation of designers in France, in Europe and now worldwide that um, weren't so much seen um, uh, and, and promoted by, by the industry and that had something interesting to say uh, to the market through, uh, through, through the products they designed for us. So it's been our, our core idea right from the beginning and, and ongoing now really hand in hand with a new generation of de designers bringing new ideas to the market. And among the ideas, of course, sustainability is, um, is very important. Excellent. Very inspiring. 
And Benedict, we'd love to hear from you on that question as well. What inspired you to start your company? Yeah, in fact, uh, Jean-Baptiste, uh, my partner in life and business uh, with him, so I wanted to write uh, our own strategy and have uh, the chance to directly see the results of uh, our decision. So working in the large groups in our previous lives, 20 years ago, uh, in fact, we couldn't see our added value. Uh, so we needed to find meaning in our work uh, and apply our vision, even if we had to take uh, risks, of course. So our research was to create a company that combines creation, decorative arts uh, with the B2B markets uh, and international customer. So after that, uh, I would say it's a story of meeting, a uh, vision of the company, a patient and a lot of uh, energy. So it's also a constant questioning, a desire to improve, to take nothing for granted and uh, to uh, listen to the market, the customer, the trends, and also have a good uh, feeling uh, of soci sociology. Um, so we constantly question what uh, we can bring up different uh, to the cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan market while being proud of our own culture, values, and know-how. Um, so many collections uh, of our catalog are tributes to other cultures, uh, which creates a bridge between people of the world. This is very important for us. Wonderful. That's beautiful. And Joanna, can we hear from you on that question as well? Yeah. Well, I was 28 years old and I was working with Vigas Luna in the movie Hamon Hamon. I think it's Jam Jam in English with Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem. Because Luna was a film director and designer with whom I discovered the most authentic design uh, that at that time in the 80s uh, was very intensive and free in my city, in Barcelona. Uh, Bigas had a uh, special sensibility with everything that had to do with the design, the arts and the culture. And for me, in that aspect, he was a good teacher and who told me to, to look the objects and the spaces from another point of view, probably with more fantasy and more creativity. creativity. And well, after that, after this time, uh, I start Bober uh, 25 or 26 year, years ago. And well, that's all. <laughs> Laura, you were mentioning before the story of the napkin. So what happened was that um, after, so while she was um, working in that movie, she was expecting um, my little sister actually. Um, so she needed to drive long, like for three hours to the design set. And then she realized that um, that was really challenging with like two kids. So she kind of like stopped for a while and like to try to decide what was next because she always thought that she would be like back to the film industry. And then mm -hmm. like she was um, designing a lighting fixture for an architect's friend. And that's how everything started. So he was like, oh, wow, that's a really good design. You should like mm, keep moving with that. And then she designed her first um light picture and then there was a second one and um here we are so, <laughs> so that's Amazing. that's that's the second it's part easy, of the story <laughs> um but yeah and also it was like she always said that um she had to work so hard but being the designer and like and also like the ceo of the company allow her to like um, manage somehow to, you know, find a balance between being like a businesswoman, a mother, a friend, and, and all that. So <laughs> everything, the great balancing act. It's not different than the other women's. No, uh, mm -hmm. we have a lot of tasks now, and we can do a lot of things at the same time. No, and it's all yes. <laughs> I think many of us can relate to that. Um, thank you all for sharing so much. Those stories are so inspiring and you can see a lot of the founding of each of the brands reflected in them today. 
Next, where we want to go is um, I'm going to go to Carlota. And Carlota, my question for you is what is the biggest challenge that you see in managing a design company? No. Oh, Carlota, I think, I think Wait, you sorry, might be okay. on mute. Sorry, sorry, there we sorry. Go. I, first of all, I would like to thank you, everybody. Uh, Laura Walsh and uh, Patricia Kittredge and all, all the panel and thank you to be here and share our ideas uh, with the energy of light. Uh, the first question was, uh, the, 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 what is the biggest challenge to Siemen? Uh, but I yes. think it's so, it's so complex, so I don't uh, want to say something uh, uh, out of uh, this rhythm, the matter, in my opinion, is to be always visionary. We are we are in field of light, in the field of the light. The field of the light is put together uh, visions, uh, science, many many matters. So it's a re it's a really serious field. All the fields are serious, but it's scientific fields. So it's not a matter only of design, that means perspective, that means a project, is a matter of science, is a matter of many, many things. So design uh, in our field, uh, the future means, uh, in my opinion, to, to take the future, to bring the future in the present. And bring the future in the present is not only a matter of uh, of uh, shape. I don't like shapes, and to me, designing light is only, but not shape. So it's a matter of energy, it's a matter of uh, uh, perception, is a matter, of, and at the end arrives the beauty. But uh, it's a matter of interactions, and mainly now more than uh, in other. Uh, Years, decades is a matter of, uh, of course, we, you have told sustainability and so on. So we are speaking about energy, we are speaking about provide the good life, the good life quality all over the world to everybody, mainly in the darkness of, of, uh, of uh, what we know does exist. So when we have uh, established uh, since the beginnings, because Artemide is a company founded by Ernesto Gismondi, my husband that is no more with us, and uh, is a family company all over the world. We are proud to be one of the first lighting company, but managed with uh, the matter of humanity, with a, a community of workers, of uh, uh, scientists of many, many sales uh, organizations. And uh, we think that uh, to answer to your question, how is, uh, what is the word, uh, da, 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 what is the, what's the question? Uh, how is, uh, what, yeah, uh, what is the biggest challenge? Yeah. Uh, the challenge is always to think, to improve the life, the quality of life, life quality all over all over the world. Of course, we are a company, of course, every company needs to make profit, but profit in the right way. It's a balance mm -hmm. between what you, what you provide and of course, uh, how you can manage this and, uh, and uh, be serious with all the community inside the company, outside the company. Values, values, values. And Wonderful. And sustainability. Very good. Thank you, Carlota. And Roberta, can we hear from you on that question as well? What's the biggest challenge that you see managing a design company? So you can imagine the challenge for me coming from different industries in this world, managing floss. So one of uh, the, the, the most uh, iconic brands in, in lighting. So I think that uh, my first challenge uh, has been uh, really understanding uh, the roots, uh, the DNA of the brand. And, uh, and uh, in order to project the brand in the future, you need to understand your roots, your DNA, in order to be always linked to this, uh, but able to, to go in the future. So I totally agree with uh, Carlotta. We needed to bring the future to the present because uh, we are 
the ones that uh, are working with the best designers in the world and they look at the future. So we need to be the best partners to them. A key point is really uh, uh, also changing a little bit the industry. So coming from a different industry, uh, when I came in uh, in the design industry, my, uh, uh, my perception is uh, being in a magic world, but also that uh, the, the potential of uh, design is by far higher because there's a lot of people that don't understand the real value of design. That is uh, the impact uh, they can uh, give uh, to your everyday life. It's not only a, a sort of status symbol or something that is beautiful, as Carlotta is saying. It's something that is adding uh, 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 value, uh, adding uh, pleasure, adding emotion to your everyday life. And uh, another key challenge to me is being able to explain to a wider amount of people all over the world uh, what does it mean. So storytelling about our products. Uh, we have Arco here. So telling the story about Arco, Castiglioni Brothers and so on. It's something that is really so attractive to people. But how to make it happen is not easy because speaking uh, to a, a US uh, uh, user is different than a Chinese one. And uh, what we can do, we can do it even better in the future, in order to attract more people to design. I think that this is the biggest challenge we have all together, because we are there to really uh, uh, make design even more understood and uh, loved by a wider amount of people. And it's not a luxury, it's, a, it's a design is really creating something in line with the Castiglioni thinking, something that is really uh, uh, connected to your everyday life, uh, improving your life, uh, helping you in your everyday life, uh, and then it's something also very beautiful and amazing when you see a lighting uh, like this uh, that can be switched off or switched on, it's, it's fantastic. But I think uh, that for all of us, uh, this is the biggest challenge, uh, but also the biggest opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes, agreed. No, very, very inspiring. I agree. I think one of the best parts is the impact that we can have on everyday life. Um, wonderful. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the topic of sustainability, which we've already heard a little bit about today. Um, so, Benedict, we'll go to you first. How or has the industry-wide push for sustainability changed your approach to business? Yes, in fact, we, we believe that uh, what is good for people is good for the earth, for the planet. So, uh, the choice of selecting non-polluting products our uh, material uh, has always been an impediment for our well-being uh, as well as for the planet. So no plastic product uh, uh, has been uh, t uh, selected in our collection. Um, so for us, ecology is not only a matter of uh, materials. Uh, it is first of all to take care of the human uh, and to be concerned with the historical and socio-cultural uh, context in which we create. So it's also to think of the service we want to provide um, and uh, it is about influencing the living environment, um, the atmosphere, building a place conducive to well-being by, by telling a story that means the need of the society. So for a designer, uh, making a production more ecological uh, means imagining a minimalist module and developing a system. This is what we've done with our Bestellian Nuage, and, uh, but also Mosaic uh, more recently. So um, what was fundamental is to create a system, a modular design, uh, which has the direct consequences uh, to reduce the production, uh, the, 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 back, the packing, uh, the footprint of our production, the storage, and uh, and the all end of lost uh, series also. So it's uh, also a desire to use as many uh, possible um, uh, common parts uh, in common. Um, and um, finally, uh, having an important part of uh, export in our turnover. Um, the sustainability value has always been part of our DNA. Um, upstream from the design phase, we had to think uh, about this question of logistics, storage and packaging. So it has always been out of the question for us to deliver a hotel 
uh, including one box for each lamp. Um, so all our products are designed to stack together, uh, which avoids cardboard uh, waste. To summarize for designer, uh, sustainability is a match between the imperatives of good management, agility and ecology. Wonderful. Thank you. Joanna, we'd love to hear yeah. from you on that question as well. Well, my commercial approach is close to social sustainability. I'm interested in the valor, value, the, the artisan products with technical innovations, and because it entails a circular economy and uh, an inclusive society. Uh, an important part of the sustainability lies in the durability. For me, these words are very difficult. <laughs> uh, the products in general should not be single use. Uh, they should be repair, reparables. And at this point, the quality of the product, I think it's very important. It's essential. And it is our responsibility to, crea to create a parallel industry that help uh, to the companies to reduce the, all the waste from the lamps, cars, phones, batteries, drivers, and a lot of products that we waste and that probably we can put on the in la rueda on the wheel, back, wheel back, back the wheel back the wheel no and well the synthesis is that because our industry is not very ecological that's the reality no but maybe we can do another things no that help the the earth to be better. I don't know. Very good. Thank yeah. you. And Amelie, let's hear from you on that question as well. Um, uh, about sustainability, I think our, our focus is really to build products that are made to last. Um, and this is thought right from the beginning in the discussion with the designers. Of course, it means good design and uh, a design that people are wanting to, to keep. It, it's all also about the construction of the products, how they are built. So with, with quality pieces, with, of course, materials that are respectful, recycled or recyclable. And also in the way they are put together so that they can be disassembled at the end of their life. Um, it's about also keeping the products in the catalog for long. Um, it's not renewing all the time, but one pr pr and promoting them, but in a way where it's not promotion. In fact, it's not about a rebate. We try to explain the value of what we're doing, the designer behind, the quality of the, the way we do it, and, and giving uh, all the story behind it so that people cherish it, really choose it. So it's a real state of mind right from the beginning till uh, until when you del deliver it to the final end consumer. And we are also working and progressing on other um, on other things like um, offering uh, repairs or spare parts so that you can, um, if something happens to your product, that you can have it repaired. So all this is very, uh, very important for us and in, in a progress way, of course, because we are, uh, we don't take everything for the moment, but it's really on its way. And, and for this, we also commit. Um, we are now a purpose led company, which means that we uh, fix goals on this and we say where we're standing today, where we will go tomorrow. Um, and we have external um, people who come uh, to check on this. Um, so it's a, um, a new decision in the company and an important one. Also that everybody in the company feels that it's a, it is a company, um, uh, um, how can I say, state of mind. It's not just, it's not just me as the founder or, or, or the designers. It's something that we monitor on a, in, in, in each task on a daily life. Excellent, very well said. Thank you. All right, my next question, I know many on the call are eager to hear about. Um, some of you are also designers. So I'm gonna to come to Carlota and Joanna for this question. How do you manage both responsibilities? So Carlota, let's hear, hear from you first. 
Ja, bei mir neu, ja. Ne? Ja. Not. All right, we, we can hear you now. Yes. So the question was, how do you manage both, both responsibilities, being both a designer and a business leader? Mi date poi questo. Uh, it's up to me just to answer, no, to be polite. <laughs> we have to answer first, just to be polite. Okay. But, you know, I think that um, when, when I receive, uh, when I receive your question, I wrote some answer, but uh, to be honest, I, I, I'm free to answer because <laughs> it's, it's so simple. I think that, um, Sometimes uh, I used to, I, 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 I am a, also a professor at the university and uh, what I try to teach uh, always is to, to start to, to focus on values and uh, on when we design our life, uh, first of all, we have to study the deeply, deeply to understand the meaning of lives. And this is normal, we have to work. This is our job when we are, uh, when we are young and so on. And then we have the tools to design, to try to design an hypothesis of our future. An hypothesis, who knows? But uh, following our passion, following our, I think, uh, um, to be free to dream with a deeply knowledge, working, but to be free to dream, totally. And so I think that um, to me, my mother is, is still uh, alive, she's 94, and she's an architect. And um, in some way, I decide to, to follow this kind of idea that during, when I was young, uh, now I'm, I was born in 57, so uh, in June I will be 66. Uh, please, the birthday presents and so on. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, just to say that my dream was to put together, to, crea to create a synthesis between uh, a social dream and uh, um, something really, um, we can say, realistic in terms of doing. So building spaces for, uh, for the future of human being, of uh, animals, of nature, of everybody was my dream. Then coming back, so in my, in my history towards uh, this, um, this role that I have, always was together designing, means uh, uh, in studying uh, towards, uh, as I said, bringing the future in the present, studying it, and, and put all these ideas on the fields and production. Because the industrial production is one of the first super democratic uh, tools through companies to deliver the quality all over the world. And not only culture, but mainly a new life quality to survive and to educate everybody also in terms, mainly in terms now in sustainability. So we can educate through the energy of life to stay better and also to take care of the world and all the energy of the world. Wonderful, thank you. Joanna, let's hear from you as well. Um, well, with a, with a good woman team, I think that uh, a good thing because uh, in my case with the both companies in US and in Barcelona it was very difficult for a long time and um, for me focus my responsibilities in all the companies departments was um, very difficult very difficult and for this reason my table work in Bover has always been three meters from the technical office desk because I'm everywhere, no? And I'm looking, listen, and <laughs> all in in one. Uh, because in the in the medium-sized family business, uh, um, 
are, uh, are different from others because the people who work in them usually have a high degree of involvement and responsibility. No? And uh, this, this was a uh, good help for me. No? Uh, I have been looking to meet and work with a fantastic team. And well, it's que this question uh, is very long. <laughs> if I start to explain, I don't finish, no? And I try to reduce, no? And because it's very, it's very difficult for me to um, give you a uh, specific answer. But um, she typically also like, or she sometimes shares that um, at the end it's about relationships and being able like to share like the space and that amount of hours that at the end of the day we are all like working. Um, so in terms of like design, um, she had the connection with her team to to be able to share like ideas that are not uh, that are not drawn that no one can see so the fact of having this like relationship her team knows or is able to imagine and kind of like picture what she has in mind so mm -hmm. i think that's really like the key of everything because it's like where everything starts and and that's about like knowing your team like how she feels how she thinks uh, how joanna gets inspired and then when you have that mm -hmm. you are able like to then like draw and design and do like your mock-ups and and all that so i think it's about like relationships and team Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, it makes sense that that's the starting point and understood that that's probably a multi-layered question, but I think that gave our audience some good, good insight. So next, Roberta, I'll come back to you and I'd love to hear how involved are you in selecting new designs for your company and what is the process? Oh, I am uh, really involved. I have to say that uh, a lot of my time is uh, dedicated to these uh, part of the my work that is fantastic i, I love uh, this part uh, but it's also very very difficult uh, and uh, what we have decided as soon as i entered the company we have decided uh, to create uh, a steering committee so a team of uh, four people me uh, the the marketing director is a woman and uh, and then also having two uh, people that uh, were outside the company but uh, very very uh, 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 connected uh, to the company and uh, that are uh, Calvi and Brambilla our design creators so we have moved from an approach of having an art director to an approach of having a steering committee that is really able to look at the the brand and the product uh, and design development in a very synergic way and uh, so in this way we have created a process that is involving uh, all of the different uh, uh, teams uh, in the company because plus has different teams uh, into decorative architectural outdoor bespoke we have several uh, research and development teams and uh, also defining uh, the way of interacting with other des our designers. So we we have created a way of working uh, with our designers and we our uh, uh, R and D uh, teams uh, that is able to activate uh, a very uh, um, a very strong uh, pipeline creation of ideas. So concepts that are coming from designers or a floss that is. Uh, 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 creating a, a new patent in technology, giving to one or two designers in order to really uh, uh, um, stimulate them and they come back with something uh, special. So one example, we have uh, just uh, launched a few months ago, a wonderful product from Marcel Banders that is at Skynest. And everything started with these kind of stripe uh, of uh, lead, uh, very flexible, but perfect uh, with no uh, uh, so totally uh, homogeneous and uh, with this uh, Marcel started playing and then he came back with wonderful designs with wonderful picture with wonderful drawings 
And uh, this one uh, was uh, shown to me and say, when I saw it, I say, wow, that's it. And in this process, uh, there is a special moment uh, where you see the sparkle and you understand that the product is there. Sometimes uh, the sparkle doesn't come and the product uh, will never see the light uh, because uh, there's no magic in. So everything we do in floss has to be magic. It can be uh, 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 more in uh, the, 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 we can say, uh, architectural, technical side or more in uh, the decorative side, but uh, has to be magical. And this process is uh, really a, a continuous collaboration with the designer. Patricia was saying, uh, one, uh, uh, so we, we had a lot of afternoons with Patricia to create Almendra. And I have to say, at the end of any afternoon, uh, uh, everybody was coming out from this meeting like uh, <laughs> in a shaker because she is so powerful. She has so many ideas. Every time she is really challenging herself. But at the end, uh, uh, after one night of uh, uh, thinking about that, uh, everything was taking a, 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 the right direction. And at the end, she has created something mm, fantastic together with the team that was able to understand and to push the limit and, uh, and uh, enlarging uh, the, the opportunity to create something special. So it's, uh, it's a, a, a huge collaboration within the company with our designers, uh, with our design curators. Uh, and in this way, we are able to, to create uh, continuously something special. Amazing. It's, it's always very inspiring to get a little insight into the creative process. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Amelie, what, what do you want to add? How involved are you in selecting the new designs? <laughs> Very involved. I think that's my <laughs> most of my job. Um, and I agree it's the best, the best part of the job as well. So I, I it's um, uh, we work a bit differently because of course we're not so much we're uh, we don't come from the industry, a country to floss. So uh, we are open to projects in furniture and lighting and accessories, which makes it very large. Um, I always need to, and, but at the same time, we have this to and throw process as well. Um, we have a vision of where the company wants to go, on what kind of markets and what kind of products we need to develop in the future. This in mind, I meet the designers and have a ongoing conversations with, a, with, with, with the designers to try and spot those projects that will match our DNA and of course um, stand out. So it's, it's first a question of creation, bringing the right projects in. And once those are spotted, it's a, an ongoing discussion because uh, an, uh, a first intention, uh, which is very creative, of course, needs to come to the market with all the technical, financial um, aspects um, that are uh, integrated in it. And this makes the project change in the process. Um, but it, it is often very good, in fact, because um, creative uh, creativity uh, brings a lot of uh, many ideas. Whereas a good product is about lizability, is about having a very core idea that's straightforward, that a final end consumer can understand uh, from the first point. But to get to that, it, 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 it is important, in fact, to introduce a bit of constraint and to have this discussion and check that at the end, of course, the, mark, the product uh, is at the right price, um, will be, um, will be good uh, in, in, in regards of, of quality and, and everything, but still that the, the initial idea is still inside and, and this is where it comes right. And there's a spark, I agree. You know, you know when it's good. Amazing. Um, thank you both. And, and just glancing at the time, we're coming up, we've got about 11 minutes left, so I'm going to jump to our lightning round. There's a lightning round in the first panel and we have one as well. So I'm going to ask each of you the same question and maybe Joanna will start with you. But the question is, who do you consider to be a pioneer, a disruptor or a trendsetter in design yeah. right now and why? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know Patricia said uh, Charlotte Perriand, which is somebody I very much admire because you know, Sorry. This this you of a woman. Um, so this would be one, and and one that I'm more emotional with is Annie Albers. Um, so yeah, because uh, 
uh, uh, uh, also the relationship with textile and 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 the the research ongoing research opening fields um, uh, helping younger ones open to new ideas to new countries and so on I think this touches me a lot wonderful Roberta yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I have uh, in mind uh, uh, Paola Antonelli, uh, so she's not a designer, but uh, she's really able to, uh, um, uh, her goal is making people understanding design, that is exactly the, the biggest challenge we have, and uh, uh, she is uh, the, the, uh, the driving uh, the architecture and design uh, department in uh, in MoMA New York. So she is really uh, a lady that is uh, able to read and see the world uh, and uh, our current moment and explaining uh, what does it mean design. She has also uh, um, uh, she, she has she has did, uh, she did the, the Broken Nature, a, a wonderful exhibition in 2019 where um, there, it was introduced the concept of sustainability and how much we are destroying our world and how design can really uh, uh, push the industry and uh, every every uh, different part of uh, uh, the value chain in order to change. And uh, also she has been to shake uh, everybody in this direction, working with uh, uh, working with Forma Fantasma, working with Neri Oxman. So I think that uh, she is a visionary person that is really able to, to, to push uh, and to be pioneers in, uh, in giving uh, this kind of view of the world. So I love her. Wonderful. Benedict, what about for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, as a pioneer, uh, I would uh, choose uh, also uh, Charlotte Perriand, <laughs> sorry Anneli, <laughs> uh, for her vision, uh, her freedom, uh, the fact that, that she was feminist and very de determined. Um, mm -hmm. And she was also the key figures in the world of the 20th century design. She revolutions, uh, revolutions sorry, uh, the teaching, and uh, it's also thanks to her that uh, in France uh, the design will be uh, considered as a major art. Uh, so her footprint uh, was really uh, very important in France uh, as a woman. Wonderful. Carlota, what about for you? Who would you consider to be a pioneer, a disruptor or a trendsetter right now? So, so in terms of disruptor means uh, pioneers, no? This is the question. Yeah, that, the question yes. is yes. pioneers. Consider okay. either a pioneer or disruptor. In my opinion, Samantha Cristoforetti and Carlo Rovelli. <laughs> totally. And also a von der Leyen in politics. And I totally agree with Neri Oxman in design. So, three. Three fields, science, Samantha Cristoforetti, Carlo Rovelli. I think that everybody knows both, I suppose. Politics, Ursula von der Leyen, that's a great, great protagonist of uh, our contemporary, not only in Europe, but uh, designing all the connections and uh, Neri Oxman, for sure. Then there was uh, the, the other question, but uh, the disruptor, but it's not, it's not yeah, in yeah. the same. Tell, tell, who would be your disruptor? Disruptor to me, Stella McCartney and Virgilia Blow, together with Paolo Antonelli. Yep. Very good. Thank you. And Joanna, let's come back to you. For <laughs> me, Ingo Maurer, in lighting, uh, because the most complex uh, things are explained with simple words, no? And this is how Ingo Maurer uh, translates the, the light, no? For me, he was a pioneer in the use of new technologies and taught us the light should not be just an object. Uh, his lamb told us stories, no? And I like it. Agreed. Amazing. I love all of those responses. Um, now we are going to shift to some of the audience Q&A. So for any of you tuning in, if you have a question that you'd like to ask these ladies, please put it into the GoToWebinar box um, at the bottom. And let's see what we have so far. Yeah. 
Okay, we'll go with this first question and, and any of you can answer. Okay. As an executive, what market have you wanted to enter but have not yet? Maybe a hard one, Good maybe one. confidential. <laughs> No, no one wants to share. Okay, we'll go to this one. What advice would you give to your younger self? Many. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. When when they are thinking, I I forgot uh, the the biggest aerospace uh, after uh, Samantha or before Samantha Cristoforetti. Then because they told me that maybe you don't know who is Samantha Cristoforetti. She's an hour super woman, woman. But uh, I would like to say that the, the real great uh, pioneer was uh, I have signed on my uh, my sheet of paper, and uh, Ernesto Gismondi was uh, he worked at the NASA. Ernesto Gismondi was my husband, and mainly was the founder of Artemide. And uh -huh. he was involved in designing aerospace uh, rockets. And uh, so this is always to say that we are managing energy in many fields. Mm -hmm. So, and Samantha Cristoforetti is very well known, but mainly I will, I will send you a biography. She is the first woman that has, has gone around the world of uh, space but anyway Amazing. sorry yeah yes no we actually are, i wrote we are, italian, all of... we are italian and normally we 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 promote our women italian women all over the world amazing sorry, <laughs> i sorry love that and i wrote down all the answers actually to okay. do some more, but some remember more Ernesto, the super <laughs> ernesto gismondi wonderful any of you want to share on any advice you'd give to your younger self now that you've had a minute to think about it? I'd say as a woman, be more indulgent with uh, ourselves because coping with uh, a company, a family, uh, everything seems a challenge when you're young, maybe still, but you learn to live with it with a lot of uh, happiness. But uh, at, at the beginning, I think uh, you put a, a lot of pressure on yourself, whereas it's not so necessary. I think COVID has learned this as well. No, I have a daughter. I have a daughter. Her name is Carolina. She's an architect. She has two degrees, the last 33 years old, and a woman, uh, architectural association in London. And uh, my suggestion to her, and Ernesto said all, always to her, uh, discover the world. Mm. Be curious, discover the world, and take your decision and do not be afraid and take your risk, but go. And so I think that uh, really listening to the world and uh, listening to the world and try to understand the difference and the building bridges all together to design the future. Wonderful. Learning from each Carlota. other. Carlota. I have learned from you today and thank you. Thank you for this. <laughs> Carlota, I agree. I totally agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have, uh, my my point of view is I totally uh, I totally agree with Carlotta. Uh, I think that uh, another key point is uh, uh, for women, uh, especially for women uh, and the young women, uh, is uh, being a woman. So never trying to to change our nature, but uh, uh, exploiting what we are so we are able to uh, uh, to be sensitive to sensitive uh, to to everything we are able to listen to people we are able to to be very assertive uh, but not aggressive uh, we are able to to be very inclusive so the point is uh, let's uh, exploit uh, our nature because this is the age of women of uh, this kind of sensitivity and uh, we need to really use this uh, in uh, the most effective way Yes, let's show Roberta. Us. Yeah. Bravo, Roberta. And we yeah. are all invited by me and Roberta at the Salone del Mobile in terms yeah. of be inclusive all together, only women. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I love it.
<laughs> I love it. Um, that, I think that's a very, a very good note to bring this to conclusion. And I think we saw a lot of the power of women on display in this panel. So I do want to thank you all so much for spending the time with us. I know all of our viewers very much appreciated your insights and for the candid discussion. And so with that, right on time, we are going to bring this summit to a close. So thank you, everyone, and I'll see you all in Milan in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Just one thing. Uh, yes. Today, we, uh, we are talking about uh, women in design, and I would like to have a uh, memory for Nina Maso, no? because I think, uh, well, she passed away four weeks ago, and I think he was a uh, uh, Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you Bye. for bringing that up. And she was thank actually you. part of the inspiration Grazie. for this panel. So thank you for ending us with that note. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Ciao.